What's up guys? Rotten Sugarland, walking down Commonwealth Street. Now this is pretty close to where we normally fish the big pond, but if you come down Commonwealth Street, eventually you get to a point where there is this uh, pretty large waterway. I think it's meant to be a drainage channel. It's definitely man-made. And it runs between the two sides of the road, as you can see. It's up ahead and I have never driven past it without seeing a number of fish hit the surface of the water. What are they? I don't know. Probably sunfish. But out here I've been shocked at the number of species that we've been able to pull out of the water. Invasive species like armored catfish, uh, which I've only found dead. Remember, I haven't caught one yet. Tilapia. There's Asian grass carp out here. There's mirror carp. There's common carp. I've seen alligator gar. Largemouth bass, there's crappie. The previously mentioned sunfish. So we don't know what we're gonna get. Now, things move faster when you're driving, obviously. So having only driven down this road, I thought for sure I'd walk down here in a matter of minutes. It's a lot further when you're on foot and wearing a new pair of steel-toed boots that you bought for work. I'm trying to break them in. So we've been walking for a little while now, but we're almost there. And I've only got one rod with me today, just that small rod that I've been using a lot recently. I really like this one. Uh, you know, I'm not into plugging brands, but uh, it's a little Penfierce, Penfierce uh, second generation reel on a classic ugly stick GX2 rod. I mean, it's simple as you can get. Works really well. The GX2 rods are not the most sensitive in the world. But if you fish the way I do, nine times out of ten, you're holding onto the line with a couple of fingers anyway. So it kind of makes up for it. And I've got straight fluorocarbon on here, eight pound fluorocarbon. Which should help. I mean, the water out here is not super clear to begin with. The advantage of fluorocarbon is that fish generally can't see it in the water, or at least that's how this stuff is marketed. But uh, the water we're going to fish in is pretty muddy, so ultimately it doesn't matter. And I brought my landing net. because the banks of the, uh, the waterway we're gonna fish in are man-made. They're gonna have a steep side to them, probably coated in concrete or brick. So fish, you know, swimming up against that, potentially gonna cut your line. And it's gonna be really dangerous uh, in terms of losing the fish. I shouldn't say dangerous, foolish, in terms of losing the fish to try to lift them out by the hook. I mean, if they're any more than two pounds, so Brought my landing net for just this purpose, and here we are. This continues for quite some ways. You can see a couple of turtles just went into the water. Now recently there was a lot of activity among construction crews uh, pulling out the old rock lining and putting in new rocks. Because this is such an enclosed area, the fish don't really have anywhere to run to. It's not like a lake or a river where they're just going to hightail it and swim miles away. I mean, this thing continues maybe six, 700 yards on the other side of that far bank. So no matter where they tried to go, we can find them. And you can see those man-made walls I was talking about. Definitely, definitely going to benefit from having a landing net. But what we're going to do is we're just going to walk along the sides of the bank and cast a variety of baits in the water. I brought a couple of different things. Right now I've got the same MEPS on it that we caught some of those white bass on just because I haven't had a chance to change any of the tackle. So we'll have a shot with that. We'll throw that in there a couple of times. Also brought some worms, uh, some ground bait that I found to be highly effective, a new recipe that I tried that I absolutely love. And I brought some bread. What am I hoping for? You know me, I'm hoping for a carp. Love to catch a carp. But any species would be nice, just so long as we don't blank. All right guys, we switched baits, so I took the MEPS off, and what we did instead, small single hook with just a little bit of that ground bait smushed on the end of it. Uh, the hook is actually barbless. I had thought about, do I make it barbless? Do I pinch the barb down or keep the barb on? Uh, then I got the hook caught in my pants and couldn't get it back out without crushing the barb down, so that decision was made for us. Now, I'm gonna put on just a single BB shot, which is just a, a small lead weight that you just crimp over your line. I'm going to put it maybe, oh, probably eight inches from the hook. So from here to here is all we're going to have free. 
and that is going to be our casting weight. We don't need much, and we're going to get this out in the water and see if we can't get a fish on my favorite homemade ground bait, which it's kind of scary. It catches fish really fast, but it also smells just like cookie dough, and I really hope what I put in this is not in cookie dough. All right, guys, got a fish on. Not a bad sized one either. I don't know what it is yet. It's, ah. What we got here? Let's get the landing net. Oh, oh, nice. Interesting. Okay, this is a species I was definitely expecting to find here, but this is a big one. So, catfish, no surprise. The size of this catfish, a little bit surprising. Oh my goodness, hang on, I gotta figure out his pectoral fins, they stick them out when they're threatened to keep other fish from swallowing them. A lot of fish will do that to some extent, but he's caught them in my landing net, so I just gotta get him untangled, there we go. Oh, this is actually a really decent sized catfish, guys. Oh, he's big, 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 big fish. All right, now this is actually where Having gone with barbless hook is going to come in handy because unhooking this catfish should be pretty easy. So I've got my little hook disgorger here. The only thing that's making this hard right now is actually the size of the fish. It's giving me a heck of a time, and I'll show you why. A little bit of an irregularity. Here's this big blue catfish, y'all. Look at that. That's a decent sized fish coming out of this waterway. Good healthy fish too. If you look at that bulge in his stomach right there, this fish has been feeding really well. You can see his pectoral fins here and here, and this uh, dorsal fin all equipped with very dangerous spines. Well, not very dangerous. You can't really do any damage to you. Uh, that's gonna be life-threatening in any way. I mean, really, it's just extremely painful. So. The reason this fish is giving me such a hard time to hold on to, and I'll show you, if you look on the right side of his jaw, you might see a little bit of damage right under my middle finger. This catfish clearly had some type of traumatic uh, incident when it was younger that damaged its lower jaw. Maybe it was another fisherman mishandling the fish, maybe it was a bird attacking it, but if I let him close his mouth a little bit, you can see how far recessed his lower jaw is beneath his upper jaw. And uh, generally with catfish, here, let me try to turn him around. I'm really scared he's gonna flip around and stab me with his spines. Here you go. You can see his upper jaw does not line up with his lower jaw. That's unusual, that, that wide gap right there. So this fish has overcome some form of injury, but as you can see, it has not stopped him from feeding um, that's really not a huge problem to this type of animal. I mean, he can swim up to virtually anything that is less, you know, a little bit smaller in size than the width of his own head. He'll swim up to that and he can just suck it down and swallow it whole. These rasping pads, I mean, really, in an environment like this, uh, they're just an afterthought. They're nice to have. This fish does not need them. So let's let this fish go. This is actually a fantastic first catch. I am generally not fond of catching catfish, but I mean, look at this waterway. Nothing spectacular, and this is a pretty decent fish, so let's let him go. Oh. Catfish always kick off really hard, really fast. I've never had a catfish sit and take a long time to recover. So we got a fish out of this spot. Uh, probably killed the action for everything except catfish. That's all that really sits around with that type of ruckus going around. So let's walk further down to that side and see if we can't get something else. One fish down, let's see what else we can do. All right guys, I see exactly where I want to put my bait. If you look down here at the end of this uh, waterway, at least this side of it, it continues on the other side of the hill. I'm gonna drop it right in front of that little culvert there on the left. Now, could those also be culverts? that might be uncovered in low water, maybe. But in all my time driving back and forth over these roads, I haven't noticed that to be the case. I think further down it might be, but I think for now our better bet is over here on this side. So we'll try a few different spots over here, but I like this location. 
The only thing I don't like is how steep this hill is. Look at this. One wrong move. <clears throat> Which I'm trying very hard not to make. And we're going swimming. That's the problem. This clover is very slippery. Alright, this is a good spot. Yeah, quite pleased with this look. We got a culvert on this side. Culvert on that side. Potentially culverts over there. You know what? I can actually see, if you look on the very left-hand corner of the very left-hand culvert, you can see the lip where the water doesn't quite reach to the top. Right between the leaves and the concrete. This, this actually is a culvert. Three. And I can see some fish activity, so we're scrapping this plan for now. We're gonna put our bait right there. Look at that, you can see the ripples in the water. Look at that. Not the ripples that are moving towards the culverts, that's the wind. Look right there, center screen, you can see that activity. Those are fish. Those are fish, and we're gonna see if we can't pull one out. All right, I know exactly what we're gonna do. Drum roll. A small piece of a Canadian night crawler. Now, these are all dead, but they haven't decomposed, so they're still whole. I find, and please comment down below if you, if you disagree, because this is not an argument, this is just a matter of experience. Uh, I find these get fish biting faster than any other bait. It doesn't mean big fish, but just fish in general. Sunfish, perch, bass, catfish, something starts messing with my line when I've got worms on the end of it, or pieces of worms on the end of it, faster than anything else I've ever fished with. If you've got experience with something else being highly successful like that, please comment below. Let me know what it is. But uh, whenever the bite is slow, putting night crawlers on the end of my line always makes things speed up a little bit. All right, guys, there is some really big fish moving around right in front of us. I've seen it form this huge beeline in the water twice. There's a big swirl followed by a beeline which is generally indicative of a big fish swishing its tail or turning in, turning in a different direction from where it was sitting still and then taking off its speed. Fish either do that when they're hunting or when they're scared. I'm hoping in this case it's hunting, uh, mostly because I've seen it do it in the exact same spot twice. When a fish is scared, the odds it's going to hang around in the exact same spot kind of slim. Our float just stopped moving. Just saw it barely, barely vibrate. I mean, I saw the briefest of bobs going down. Now it's just sitting there. I put a bigger worm on. I put a bigger worm on. The moment I saw the size of that beeline in the water, put a bigger, bigger section of a night crawler on, which, by the way, is actually alive, which is a huge advantage for us. I thought all my worms had died. They're not. About half of them are still alive. Okay, I see some bubbles. Could be a turtle, could be a carp. Oh, I'm really hoping something, something exciting takes that bait. All right guys, fish on. Now of all the fish to take a moving worm, only one really makes a lot of sense. When I say moving worm, I mean I was reeling it back in. Look at this fella. Gorgeous, gorgeous largemouth bass. Not too big, but hey, they don't have to be big when they're this pretty. Not a fan of catching largemouth bass, generally speaking, but good grief, if that is not a pretty fish, what a gorgeous animal. Now, I am generally up in front of the camera. I'm actually going to sit behind the camera because I really want to make sure. There we go. That I'm holding this guy in the camera just right to get all the splendid colors. What a beautiful animal. Look at the green, this emerald green, and these black stripes and this huge mouth, which by the way is not where he gets his name. I mean, largemouth bass and smallmouth bass have a huge mouth. The name largemouth has to do more with the joint right here in his mouth, which, good grief, what beautiful colors. Yeah, fantastic fish. Now this one's just a juvenile. They will get much bigger than this. You know, largemouth bass can be caught in the right place at the right time, weighing as much as 9 or 10 pounds, maybe even more. I don't know what the record is, but good grief, what a beautiful, beautiful animal. 
for a guy who doesn't love to catch bass, I am very happy with this fish. God, what a gorgeous animal. And that's, that's the thing. It's a sight predator. That's why he kept going after the worm as I moved it across the water as opposed to, you know, let it sit there. So we're going to let this guy go. Look at that stripe, guys. Look at that stripe. And here he goes. And he's gone. Oh, that's cool. Okay. And now my camera's not going to pick this up. I wish it could. But uh, I'm just now realizing that some of the, the little lines in the water that I thought were fish fry, there are fish fry. But some of the, uh, some of the ripples in the water are being caused by uh, just huge water bugs. Which, which will happily eat a fish fry, by the way. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to put my rod down way up here. Just in case the fish takes it, I'll have plenty of time to see it go. I'm going to use my landing net and see if I can't scoop one of these water bugs out of the, out of the channel here to show you. Got it. I am, I'm shocked that worked. Look at this guy. So cool. There's your side view. Watch when I turn him towards the camera. What a neat looking bug. Now this guy, by the way, is a voracious predator. He'll eat those fish fry in there. He'll dive under the water. He'll catch them and devour them. There's his back. Look, he just blends in. If you can imagine him sitting on the, on the bottom of this water feature, he'd be invisible. Really, really cool guy. Actually, I want to film this guy going back in the water. So let's get real close here without, without falling in. Here he is. We're going to try to follow his descent. And there he goes. He just swims away. All right, guys. We've got our net ready. We've got the MEPS on. The MEPS is a type of lure or a brand. And it's just a spinner. It's a spinner bait. So here's the main body of the lure here. Just a, a section of stainless steel with some beads uh, with a wire run through them. And on the end, you've got this treble hook, and this big spinner right here uh, loops around as it moves through the water, just like that. See that? It's like a ballerina. And that flashes and sends out vibrations that the fish can pick up with its lateral line, or, and or, it detects the flash. Come on, get in focus. Here we go. It's so hard with all this debris behind it to focus. Also, I'm trying to press the focus button with my finger. That's all wrapped up from getting sliced open with a fillet knife. There we go. And then a nice chartreuse color with that silver flash. You'll probably mistake it for some form of fish, fish fry or perch. And that should be enough. I've just got that fluorocarbon tied straight to it. So let me put the camera right here. I want you guys to see the fish take it. If it is a bass that's making that swirl in the water I keep seeing, you're gonna see you're gonna see some splashing when it takes this lure. So fingers crossed. There we go. Just slow retrieve. No guarantees guys. Just because we have on a good lure does not mean you're going to get that fish. However, caught several white bass on this MEPS just the other day. Got him. Look at that. Look at that, guys. Woo! Well, I hope that was all on camera. Looky there. Small bass on the MEPS. Oh, hold still, buddy. Get that hook out. That right there is a lure and a half. Can't necessarily say the same thing about a fish. But this is, like our last, our last customer, a very lovely animal. Just great. So let's put this one back. I want to see how many we can get. 
There he goes. I want to see how many we can get out of the same spot. Let's have one more cast. I don't want to cut the camera. I want to see if we can get two while rolling. There we go. We got him right in front of that culvert. That was a good cast, if I do say so myself. Slow retrieve. Slow retrieve. Okay, we're nearing the rocks. Good place for bass to hide. Oh, I got a leaf hung up. Okay, nothing on that cast. Let's try closer to the rocks right in this area. That's where I'm going to cast to right there. Slow retrieve. Make it enticing. I know there's got to be more than one in here. Oh, man. Okay, guys. There is more than one because I just hooked him and lost him. Okay. I want to get this fish without cutting camera. So he was right in the center. So I'm not going to cast to the center. I'm going to cast behind him and pull it past him. Got a fish. Got a fish on right there, right by the rocks, y'all. Oh, and he's a bigger fish, too. Yeah, this is actually a decent sized bass. This is a net bass. No, that is not a species. That means I need the net to get him. Man, we got him. Got him. Oh, guys, this is a good sized one. And look at this. Look at this, guys. The moment he was in the net, I want to show you something. The moment that bass made it to the net, watch what happened. He threw the lure, just spit it out with contempt, right as. Oof, just got stabbed by some dorsal spines there, but it doesn't matter because I got the fish. He just spit it out. The moment we got up here, boom, gone. That is why you get a landing net. If I tried to lift him, I'd have lost this fish. And what a nice fish he is. Look at this. Oh, that's fantastic. That is fantastic. Easily twice the size, twice the weight of the one we just caught. I mean, this bass is probably two pounds. You know, two and a half pounds maybe. Not huge. Not tournament standard, but man, oh man, was that fun. He took that lure the moment, the moment that lure hit the water. I'm going to turn the camera around because, as is often the case, these fish have some spectacular color that I really want. I'm gonna put them in the soft grass here so I can focus the camera with my other hand. Look at that. Holy cow, guys. Man, this guy's changing my mind about bass fishing. Look at the colors behind his gill plate leading right up to and in front of his eye right here. What a gorgeous fish. You know, those red buds you can see down the street, right where that car is going past right now. You can see a red bud tree. That car is passing it right now. They say when the red buds are blooming, the bass start biting. And he's gone. Now, some people might say, what a great day. We're going to try to catch another one. All right, guys. Finally, we got another bass. And you know what we got him on? After trying multiple lures, none of them working, we get this lovely bass on the MEPS. Have to say guys, the chartreuse MEPS is killing it. Lovely largemouth bass. Just fantastic. Definitely breeding. You can see them in the water, running into each other, shoaling up bumping into each other, acting aggressive. That's not generally typical bass behavior unless they're breeding. You don't see them together in these types of numbers, this active on the surface of the water, this time of year, unless they're breeding. Really lovely fish. Look at the size of that mouth. You could disappear in there. If you were a little fish, it'd be the last thing you ever saw. Really cool. Really cool. Let's see if we can get one more. He's gone. Let's see if we can get one more before we pack it in. All right, guys, I am nicknaming this the Magic Meps. I'm telling you, we went up to Nacogdoches. We caught all those white bass on Meps. That's a good spot, right next to the wall there. OK, 
Guys, I'm trying to I'm trying to get the camera on for you. Oh no 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 you don't no you don't no you don't. Look at this! Oh my goodness, guys, look at this! This is a first for me. Not the first time I've caught one of these before, but first time I've caught one on a lure. Check this out, y'all. Channel catfish on a MEPS. That's fantastic. I have heard of catfish taking on lures before. Uh, specifically catfish in India and Africa. Very uh, fast predatory catfish taking lures frequently in those countries. American species of catfish, North American variety, do take lures. I've heard of it happening, but not nearly as often. And this channel catfish proves the exception to the rule for me. Took a lure. Man, you know what? What have we caught today? We've caught catfish. There, you guys are probably looking up at the sky. We've caught catfish, and we've caught, uh, we've caught bass. Two things that I'm just not super crazy about. And both, both fish today have really been uh, unique catches that I've really, really enjoyed. I almost went in the water right there. Now, the thing about treble hooks is uh, unlike single hooks, you can't just pop them out with the uh, hook discorder because they're hooked on two separate sides here. So I'm gonna use these uh, wire cutters here. I'm not gonna cut my own hook, but I am gonna use them kind of loosely as pliers. There we go, hooks out. Lovely channel catfish. Guys, that's species number three. That's what we set out to do. So we caught a blue catfish. Got some guys cheering me on over there. I don't know what he said. Something about eating this fish. Guess what? We're not eating this fish. Anyway, beautiful catfish. Lovely purple um, anal fins and uh, pelvic fins and uh, cattle fin. They're just gorgeous. I hope you guys can see that in the light. Just beautiful purple sheen to them. Rose up off the bottom and took this MEPS. My goodness, you know what? What a day it's been. This guy deserves... This guy deserves to be released on camera, so I'm gonna hold him under the water. You guys can see what a what a phenomenal looking animal he is. I'm gonna pull my hand completely out of the way fast, not because I'm worried about his spines, but because I want you to see him as he swims off. Whoosh, and he's gone. Super quick. Lovely fish. Lovely fish. My backpack is falling over on these rocks. Getting harder to film. My battery's dying. You know three species of fish, the light's fading and my battery's dying. I think a channel catfish on a MEPS is, how do I top that? Unless I've caught a carp on a MEPS, which I don't think is gonna happen. So you know what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna stay here and I'm gonna see what else I can't pull out of the water. I think I'll see you guys later. So stay tuned for the next episode. We'll see what we can or can't pull out of the water and uh, what we can and can't pull out of the water with. Bites hot, so I'm gonna keep going.